Hello, I'm James, and on this channel I colourise a lot of black and white photography, and in this video I'll be taking you through my method and showing you how I turn a picture like this into this. So let's get started. Throughout this tutorial I'll be working as non-destructively as possible. I like to be able to make tweaks when I'm making my colourisations, so I try and work in ways that make that really easy to do. So the very first step before you can really do anything is to go up to your image tab here, check your mode and check your in RGB colour. If you're working with what was originally a black and white image, it's quite often in grayscale. So you want to switch to RGB to make sure that you're in colour image mode. When colouring a picture, I like to make sure my references have all the elements I need on them. So in this case, my reference images have things like the highlights and the shadows clear, along with the imperfections for the want of a better word, such as the red nose and the red cheeks. Sometimes you'll find these have been photoshopped out of images already, so unless you want your image to look very clearly photoshopped, you want to make sure that you have these areas in. I also like to make sure that I have a range of reference images to compare my coloured image to. This way I can see very quickly if it stands out. Over here you can see I have separate folders that I've placed different reference images in. This way I can switch them on and off all at once, and I have different ones for different stages throughout this process. So I like to work using colours sampled from the real images. So in this case, we want to look for a base skin tone to start us off that we can use on this image. Now looking at these, I think I'm going to grab it from this picture. So what you want to do is use your eyedropper tool, either up here or press Alt with the paintbrush selected, and choose a colour which is neither a highlight nor particularly a shadow. Quite often you can find these obviously in between those points. In this case, I'm going to sample from around maybe here. And this up here will be our base skin tone that we add the highlights and the shadows and the pink of the nose and the red of the cheeks and all that kind of stuff on top of. Don't worry too much about having your perfect colour sampled at this point in time because we'll be tweaking it a lot very easily soon. So in order to be able to easily tweak and adjust my painting later on, I'm going to be using layer masks. If you're not familiar with layer masks, I'll quickly demonstrate one now. So if we create a new layer, and with blue as our foreground colour, we Alt, Delete or Option Delete on a Mac to fill that layer full of colour, I now can add a layer mask to it. Now, a layer mask does as it sounds and it masks out elements of the picture. By default, however, it comes in as white or with nothing masked at all. Now, if we Alt, Delete on this layer and fill it full of nothing but black, you can see the opposite is true and everything is blocked out. But with white, it was visible. So now, if I paint in a circle, you can see here over in the mask we have a white hole shining through. If I Alt or if you're on a Mac, Option click on it, we can see what's actually happening on that layer. So with that blue spot, what we can now do is add more or less using black or white. So painting with white gives us more blue, but if I hit the X key to switch to black, we can now erase parts of it. And as you see, they're now vanishing off it. We can apply effects to this mask, such as going up to Filter, Blur, and say Motion Blur, and you'll see that you can blur the mask. You can also use tools such as the Smudge tool on your mask. You can drag it, and it will smudge your image. You can also adjust your brush by right clicking and you can change the hardness or softness. So using our layer mask method, I'm going to put my skin reference on again, and I'm gonna sample once again, a sort of good base skin tone as I see it. So we'll start with that one. I can now create a new layer and fill it with our sampled color using Alt or Option Delete again. I'll then add a mask, hit X to switch to my background colour, and Alt Delete or Option Delete with the black in order to make it invisible again. Now, when I paint with white, you can see it show through, but what you can't see is the background detail. So what we need to do is change the blend mode of this layer from normal to colour, and now you can. So basically, we're just going to be painting with white in our layer mask to show through the pink. And obviously we can adjust the hardness as needed. I want a relatively soft brush for this. 
don't worry about like going over details at the moment, such as these lips, because we're going to be layering up our colour. So we'll have things like the lips and the eyes and the nose on top of the skin layer. And also don't worry too much about going outside the lines as I have done here, because we can adjust that obviously very easily using the layer mask and just paint in black where we don't want the white to show through. And with the hair, you want to actually leave a little bit of bleed over here into the hair so that we can blend the two nicely together. Now for this bit, we want to soften down our brush a little bit because it is a lot softer. And there we go, we have it filled in. Now you'll see there's a few small spots here, such as on this side where I didn't colour enough, and also on this ear where I coloured too much, where we can simply switch to black or white as needed and make those adjustments. Also, we can use a tool such as our blur tool on this edge in order to soften it down where it was a little bit too hard. And again, we can come back in as many times as we need to to make changes to that. So what we can do when we want to adjust the colours of a previously painted in layer is go down to our add adjustment layer button down here and add a hue and saturation adjustment layer. Now what an adjustment layer will do is affect all the colours that are underneath it. In this case, as well as affecting the hue and the saturation of the layers, it will also affect the lightness of the pixels. Now as it is, we don't wish to adjust the hue and saturation of all the layers, neither do we wish to change the brightness of the pixels. So what we can do is right click on our hue and saturation layer and choose to create a clipping mask. This now means that all the adjustments we make to the hue and saturation will only affect this layer and no other colours in the picture. It also means that because this layer is clipped to one that's in colour mode, if we adjust the lightness, all we'll do is adjust the relative lightness of the colours on this layer and not the pixels for the rest of the image. So as you can see on this example on the left, human skin tones have a lot of variation in them from the lightest to darkest points. So if I sample some colours here, we can have a look at what's going on. So at the lightest point, the saturation is fairly low and the brightness is very high. But as we go down, we'll see the saturation goes up and the brightness goes down. Although the lower the brightness gets, the harder it is to see how saturated it is. But I also want to point out that each time I changed colour here, the hue changed quite dramatically. So we need to try and work multiple different tones even into our base skin layer here. So in order to add these extra tones in, we're going to have to create new layers for them. So I'll go ahead here and create one for the darkest tone. Switch that off for a minute. And then I'll create ones for the other ones too while I'm here. We have four layers of colour we need to get onto the skin tone, but rather than create new masks, we can drag this mask onto these. You do that by Alt or Option, dragging on the mask onto a new layer. Now, this gives you the opportunity to notice any spots that you've missed, and there we go. Now, for the time being, I'm not going to convert this into colour mode. I mean, I can do it to show you, but we're going to leave it on normal mode because what we want to do is use one of the features in Photoshop, which I think is the best feature in Photoshop, but as with all the best features in Photoshop, it's completely hidden. So we go off down to FX and we click Blending Options. We then have this little panel with the Blend If command. And what we can do is Blend If Underlying Layer. And what this does is looks for the light and dark patches on our original picture and, you know, allows you to blend them. So here we can see two little arrows. We have a left and a right one, white and dark. Now we want the dark patches of this to remain and the light patches not to remain. So what we can do is drag our right slider down and you can see that the lighter patches become more visible. What we want to do is just have this over the shadow areas. But one of the good things about this is that if you alt or option click on this arrow, you can split it in half. So if I do that, I can now drag half of it to create a fade. So we just want this to cover really the darkest patches. And with that done, we can press OK 
and then we can turn that to colour mode. Now, we'll probably need to tweak this colour in a minute, but this is the basis of using the Blend If tool. Now, when adding in the other tones, of course we Alt Option drag the mask on again, but when we do blending options this time in order to blend if, we actually want to cut away both the lightest points and the darkest points. And then we put that in colour mode. Now, looking at this, some of these are definitely too strong. So what we can do is go down to our opacity and knock these down a little bit in terms of their opacity so it's not quite as strong an effect. Again, we can always adjust this later as needed. But now our base skin has more colours in it. So one of the most useful places to use the Blend If tool is when you're colouring hair. But in order to add extra tones to the hair, I have to add the base tones in. So I'm going to sample a fairly dark tone, fill it in, add the mask, black out the mask, I'm going to switch off my reference, and I've got to colour this in. Now I'll start painting and I will turn to colour mode for this. And I won't worry about going over the flowers at the moment because I'll be doing those on a layer on top. Now to do all these wispy edges is going to take me a little while so I won't do that on camera but I'll do a little bit of it just to demonstrate how I go about it. So what I tend to do is put my hardness right down on my brush and I'm doing this on a tablet but it would be possible to do this on anything and just very gently and lightly draw thin lines for the wispy bits. I then go over them with something such as the blur tool in order to soften them out. Put that up on a higher strength. So yeah, and as you can imagine, that takes a while, so I'll get back to you shortly. So with our hair mask complete, we can now add some more tones to it. So I'll sample some lighter tones from this hair. Might be too bright, but we'll see. Drag the mask on. And again, we can see that we have missed a few spots, which we can now paint in. So now we can go to our blending options and try and add this in to some of the mid-tones. See how that looks in colour mode. Now I'd like those to be a bit more yellow, so I can clip on a hue and saturation layer and tweak it. Now we'll want to add another set of tones in. So these will be our lighter hair. Put that in colour mode. I'll probably want to lower the opacity a little bit. What I'll probably do now is a hue and saturation layer, which I drag the mask to, but I don't clip. Because the mask basically acts as the clip, and that means I can change all of my hair at the same time. We'll leave that as is for now, but we'll come back and fiddle with it later. Okay, so with the hair done, I'm now going to start sandwiching in between the skin layers and the hair layers, all of my face tone layers. So I'm going to start with some yellow tones which I'm going to place in between the skin and the hair layers. So broadly speaking, where I wish to place these is around the eyes, and then down the bottom of the face, because that the cheeks tend to kind of block them out, and the forehead tends to be redder as well. We'll now blur that, just to soften it a little bit. And this is something we're obviously going to have to knock down a little bit, so I'll lower the opacity. I'm now going to add the red of the cheeks. And again, we'll soften that a bit. And delete any sort of bleed that's gone over into the other elements. And knock that down a bit too. Now for the nose. With the nose, I like to add a sort of a thin strip going down the middle, as well as colouring in the bottom. And again, we'll blur that out. 
we want to blur a lot of these to just kind of add soft transitions between the colors. Now quickly on the nose layer, I just want to add some little little strand bits coming down like that. That's something that we can add quickly and then blur out. Now we want to add a little bit more red to the forehead area, or at least brownie red. Just to simulate a little bit of sunburn as much as anything else, just a tiny bit. And again, we'll want to have that blurred and then knock it down a little bit. So if I were coloring a male face now, I'd add a faint blue beard line to the face and then knock it right down, as well as like a receding hairline quite possibly. In this case, I'm going to add a very slight amount of receding hairline blue just underneath where the hair is because it's been pulled back. Not because I think this young lady is balding. So you just, when you want to simulate where hair should be, you add a very faint desaturated blue. Paint it in where you want it to appear. Then you can blur it out. And then knock it right back in this case. In fact, I might smudge it up a little bit just to uh, move it up the head a little bit. Now we should add in the red of the chin. Which again will blur a bit, but not too much since we still want it to be visible. So now we want to do the ears, and there's two main stages of the ears, the red and the yellow parts. With the red parts, you want to add really the red anywhere where the ear is kind of sticking out a bit. So all the sort of raised parts really. And we'll blur that. And obviously we're going to have to do some cleanup. And we're going to have to knock that down quite a bit. We also need to add some yellows to the ear everywhere that the red doesn't go basically but particularly into the more sunken parts. And again, we'll knock that right down. Now we want to add some sort of purpley blues like you can see on this reference. And we want to make sure it's kind of around this bit here and sort of coming under the eye like that, like the reference was. Reference really is the key to all this. And then soften it. And knock it down a little bit. If you want to, you can use the smudge tool obviously for this, just to kind of get things exactly where you want them to be. Now I just want to add some sort of darker redder purples to the eyelids. You want to soften it a little, but not too much, because obviously you still want it to be in place. And knock it down a bit. Now I'm going to do the lips. It's important to remember that this picture was taken in a time before sort of lipstick was that societally acceptable. So we want to go for something fairly natural looking. Now that's a little bit too pink for me, so we're going to add a clipping mask and kind of try and make it look a little bit more natural. And we'll add some highlights like we did previously. So now I'm going to try and do something about these creepy eyes and make them look a little bit more normal by adding in some colour to them. So first we're going to go for a main white for them. I'm not going to go 100% white because I like to add a tiny little bit of colour to everything. And this already looks far better. Now I'm going to add some pinks to the edges. With the pink it does tend to sort of run into the eye a little bit so it doesn't hurt to kind of blur and smudge it a little bit. We 
we might want to knock this down just a little bit. And now we can try and actually add some eye colour. So I'm going to go, this lady has a sort of green eye with blue edges, but I'm going to go with kind of a blue eye with green edges. So if we want to add a little bit of green, we can do that fairly easily. Again, just reusing the mask and then using blend if. So we're now in the tweaking stage of the skin tone section because I'm looking at these skin tones and although all the colors are in place, I don't think they're quite right yet. Uh, when looking at my references, there's a few things I want to change. For one thing, I feel that the skin tones are a little bit too pink for the most part, with the exception of the yellow areas I painted, which I think are too yellow. Uh, I think particularly around the eyes looks quite orange. The eyes themselves might be too blue, but I won't be able to tell that until I've changed the rest of the colours really. And the hair has definitely got some weird green tones to it, which I'd like to remove. So I'm going to go through those various stages now and try and fix them. So before I start with any of the actual colour tweaks, I'm going to try and adjust the brightness of the image itself, because I'm looking at the bright areas of her face and they seem a little flat. I think particularly the sort of the high parts of her face, like her nose, need to be a little bit more bright than they are. So what I'm going to do is add a curves adjustment to the image right on the bottom of the stack. And then I'm going to drag up with this little hand here, the lighter areas to see if it makes it look any more natural. I'm also going to drag down a little bit some of the shadow areas just to try and get this looking a little bit better. I don't really want to overdo this, but I want it to look a little bit more correctly exposed, I guess. Whoop, too much. Just a little bit. We'll switch that on and off. See, that's better, but that is too strong. So I'm going to push that down a bit with the opacity. There we go, I think that's a good start. Now, earlier on, when I was colouring the various elements of the face, I left the lips and the eyes until last, and that's because I intend to do adjustments to the rest of the skin tones now. So what I'll do is add a hue and saturation layer, and I will drag one of the complete masks of the face onto it. And I'll call it Master skin. And basically with this one selected and with the mask on it, I can now tweak all of my skin tones. And also, as well as just tweaking all of them at once, I can dial down into each of these individual colors and have more control over it. So the first thing I wanted to do was to try and change the colors of the yellow in the face. So we're going to make those slightly more red. But I also want to change the rest of the face more generally to make it a little bit more yellow. So we can do that with the master controls. And making sure this layer is on colour mode, I'm going to try and make it a little lighter. And looking at that, that's coming together. I do want it a little bit more saturated though. So I think those skin tones have been quite improved. Now the dark orange around the eyes is being created by this dark brown like skin layer I added earlier. So I'm going to knock that right back. I also want to tweak the lips because I don't think they're quite the right colour. The overall kind of flatness of the face can be improved by bringing out the cheeks and the nose a little bit more in terms of colours. So on the nose layer, we can up the opacity of the colours I put there earlier, along with adding an adjustment layer to try and make them a little bit stronger. Now that has made a really dramatic difference, I think. Don't want to overdo it, but a little bit of subtlety there makes a big difference. I'll now add the cheeks and make those a little bit brighter. I'm also going to bring out the chin in much the same way. And again, I'll use that to bring in a little bit of orange. Now, I think that looks quite a lot better now. I'm now going to have a look at the hair. I created a master hair adjustment layer earlier. I actually want to quickly add some more tones to this hair because I think particularly the highlights should have a little tiny bit of gold to them. So we'll use Blendif again just to bring it up to the high points. 
We don't want too much, just a little tiny hint, and I'll tweak the colours just to make it slightly more red. And we'll just tweak the master one again. There's a huge amount of tweaking involved with a good colourisation. And with that, as for the girl, I think we're actually kind of getting there. So I'm now going to go ahead and colour her dress, her flowers, and the background. I'll come back and we'll handle this bottom bit, and we'll talk about the lighting and sort of general final tweaks. Now, with the other parts of the colouring done, I can notice more clearly that the skin tones still need a bit of work. For me, the some of the skin tones just generally aren't saturated enough, but the highlights and shadows are too saturated already. So therefore I'm going to try and fix that. The first thing I'm going to do is go down to my master skin layer, and I'm going to boost up the saturation a bit. I'm also going to make it slightly more yellow. There we go. Now I'm going to add two more hue and saturation layers. First I'll do the highlights. And I'll add one for the shadows. And I'll drag the master mask to both of them. And basically what we want to do is, first things first, knock down the saturation to nothing on that layer. And then use our blending options to only hit the absolute highlights with this. And we don't obviously want to desaturate it by that much. But we do also want to slightly tweak the colour. So we'll add a small amount of yellow to those highlights. And we'll do the same thing with the shadows, where first we knock it down just so we can see what we're doing. And again, we don't want to knock it down by anywhere near that much. And we'll make sure these layers are both in colour mode so they're not affecting the brightness. And then I can boost up our main saturation just a little bit. And I also want to tweak the brightness levels a bit again. I'll make sure that I'm only on the luminosity values so I don't affect the colours. I think I'm going to tweak the master colours just slightly. So we're pretty close now. The main things I want to do is, if you look at the original picture, you can see there's this kind of faded bottom which I wish to recreate in colour. And I also want to do some creative lighting. So in terms of the bottom, what we're going to do is choose a bottom colour. In this case, I'll go with a sort of darkish green to go with the rest of it. And then as before, we'll add a colour adjustment layer. And what we basically want to do is create a kind of curve at the bottom. Now I'm going to do that fairly quickly, just with a lasso tool line at the bottom. We'll be blurring this through so it doesn't really need to be exact. There we go. And then I will fill this bit with white. Now, in order to create that blur again, I'm going to add a motion blur to the image and make sure that the angle is pointed up. So in traditional photography, you can use gels such as these to create lighting effects, particularly on the edges of your subject. I want to create a similar effect here in that I want to kind of create a sunlight kind of effect hitting around one side and maybe create a different color slightly for the shadows. To do that, I'm going to use curves adjustment layers. So with curves adjustment layers, you can dial down into the individual red, green, and blue color channels. So what we're going to do is basically create a kind of orange color by tweaking these. So that is going to be the basis for our yellow sunlight colors. But as always, we'll now make it invisible by filling in the mask. And now we'll do the same thing with another set of curves, but this time we want to create a blue effect for the shadows. So what we're basically going to do is do a very, very simple color effect on this one. We're going to draw a very rough line across our image, roughly where the sunlight is hitting. And for the sunlight one, we're going to fill that bit with white. Now what we can do is take that mask we've just colored, drag it over to our other layer, and then control I it to flip it. We're of course going to blur both of these layers quite substantially. And as well as that, we're going to lower them in terms of opacity. And then in our blend if options for the sunlight one, we're going to make sure it doesn't hit the parts of the face and everywhere that is too dark. And with the shadow one, we're going to make sure it doesn't hit the highlights. 
Now, obviously, we only want these effects to be very, very minor. This is just to add a little bit of extra color more than anything else. And there we go. There are still a few like tiny tweaks I like to do. I quite often like to dot some reddish orange onto my faces just to uh, add a little bit of color variation. So I'll do that now. It's all about really just putting as many different sort of parts of color on your image as possible. And obviously these will be very, very, very blurred out. I also want to tweak the lips once again. And maybe just give the hair a little bit of a tweak. And the final thing I added was this very fractional hue and saturation layer. Because basically, we're done. I could make endless tweaks, but I think I'm going to draw a line under it there. So as for some final thoughts on this, my main ones would be as follows. You want to ideally export your file and check it on a few different types of screens, because what might look great on a phone might look terrible on a TV, because they've got different colour balances to them. Uh, you should walk away from a picture occasionally and come back to it, because sometimes you'll think it looks terrible, and then you'll come back and think, actually, it's not too bad, it just needs some minor tweaks, and sometimes you'll walk away thinking it looks great, and come back and think that it looks terrible. But I think, as I've demonstrated here, you can take it from a point where it looks quite bad and turn it to a point where it looks fairly decent. Uh, if anyone has any follow-up questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. And if you've got a better way of working than this, then please let me know that, because I've spent quite a lot of time on this tutorial, and I'd certainly like to know any tips or tricks that might improve my own working methods. Thank you all very much for watching. Likes and or subscriptions would be very much appreciated. The picture that you watched me colour in this video started out quite badly damaged, and I made a tutorial video of me fixing it if that interests you. On this channel, I have quite a lot of colourisation videos where I talk in depth about particular images, diving into the history of them whenever possible if you'd like to check them out. Thank you for watching.